Hello, welcome to Train Signal. This is the Troubleshooting Operations Manager lesson in the System Center 2012 Operations Manager training course. Now you may be sitting here thinking, wait a minute, why am I troubleshooting a tool that's supposed to be helping me troubleshoot my environment? Well, there's a good reason for it. Unfortunately, the sad fact of great nature is that Operations Manager can and will suffer the occasional failure. And you'll even see error messages from time to time. Because Operations Manager plays such an important part in maintaining your environment and maintaining the business, it's really important that you understand some of what you may run into and how you can start going about correcting some of the issues you may encounter. This will keep your business monitoring in business and help your bottom line tremendously over time. In fact, I think monitoring is so important that it should be considered a mission critical system right up there with your ERP, your customer relationship management systems, email, the whole nine yards. Perhaps one of the most confounding things you'll run into in operations manager is what I call gray icon syndrome. Now there's actually sort of two versions of gray icon syndrome that cause a lot of confusion. One is gray and one is green, but gray icon syndrome is actually the frustrating one. Now, when you have a gray icon with a check mark, much like the one you see on your screen, this means that the health service watcher had been receiving heartbeats from the agent and it was seeing stuff. So it was seeing monitored items. However, those heartbeats have stopped and the management server is no longer receiving information from the agent. Now, what this means is that there's not necessarily, you know, a disk full or something like that. It means that the agent itself, the operations manager agent itself, has stopped submitting data to operations manager. Therefore, operations manager really doesn't know what's wrong. So it doesn't make it red or yellow or what have you. It just knows it stopped. So it leaves it sort of in the last state it was in and grays it out. Right now it's a gray check mark. It could be a gray X. It could be a gray little warning symbol. But it will change it to a gray icon. And then you need to take steps to try to determine what in the heck went wrong. We'll talk about that further in just a few minutes. Sometimes people confuse gray icon syndrome with green circle syndrome. When green circle syndrome is not even a syndrome, it's actually a perfectly valid state for an object to be in. Basically with this, although operations manager knows that the object exists, so it knows that that Windows server is out there, there's no management packs that take advantage of what's on that system yet. So, operations manager knows that the Windows server exists, but it doesn't know to look for any disk drives or for RAM counters or for pro processor counters. So, it's just a green circle saying, yep, I know the system's here. As soon as the management packs get loaded, I'll start doing some more work. So, because green circle syndrome is really not an error condition, we're not going to focus on it much here. Instead, we're going to focus on gray icon syndrome. Now, you're not going to probably call, see it called gray icon syndrome anywhere else. That's just what I call it. So, what causes gray icon syndrome? Basically, you can end up with something along the lines of a heartbeat failure. So, for whatever reason, uh, the heartbeat just side, sort of died. There could be a configuration error leading operations manager to think there's no heartbeat. Is it a network issue? Is, there, is it an authentication issue to the machine? Is it an actual health service issue on the agent managed machine? Um, is there a database or data warehouse performance issue creating gray icon syndrome? From an action plan standpoint, specifically it's hard to say here's what you do because there's so many things that can cause gray icon syndrome. But make sure you understand the issue scope. If all of a sudden you see 50 items go gray, more than likely you've got a network issue somewhere because all of a sudden those heartbeats just stopped coming in. Now in that case you should be able to go to your network monitoring area and see that there's a device down. Is this just a simple operations manager related problem? You know, go out to Google or Bing or your favorite web browser or your favorite uh, search engine of choice and search for the issue. Have you made any changes recently to a system and then all of a sudden it's gone gray? Does the issue come and go? It means that there's something wrong sometimes, but who knows when. And does clearing the cache help? You'll learn about clearing the cache in just a minute. From a troubleshooting standpoint, it's also important that you understand 
periodic maintenance items that you may need to think about in Operations Manager. One of these items here is to monitor the health of your management group. And there's actually an easy place to do this in Operations Manager. And we're going to go over and take a look at that later on in this lesson. But you can see on your screen right now that there's a screenshot from that area. And it basically says everything's good. Everything that has to do with management group functions is in a green state, a green checkmark state, no less. So network discovery servers are working fine. Web user interfaces are working fine. Everything that we want to have working is working just fine. Now occasionally, you may find it necessary to restart your management servers. One common reason for this would be Patch Tuesday, because Microsoft released a Windows patch that requires a reboot of your server. And the way you go about rebooting your management servers is going to be different depending on how, manage how many management servers you have in place. If you have just a single management server, and this is not uncommon, don't place a server into maintenance mode. The whole purpose of maintenance mode is to have workloads fail over to a second management server. If you don't have one, all you're going to do is confuse your agents. Simply schedule a restart for off hours and let the management server reboot. Now, this will mean that for the duration of the reboot, no monitoring is happening. But when you have only one management server, that's the risk you take. If you have more than one management server, place the target management servers into maintenance mode so that you can allow those workloads to fail over to other systems. Then restart the target systems, the ones you've placed into ma maintenance mode. Once they're restarted, exit maintenance mode, but don't take offline more than one half of the management servers at a time. So basically what that means is you'll have at least two sets of servers you need to reboot. You'll put the first half into maintenance mode, allow the updates to happen and restart, bring them out of maintenance mode, then have this, then repeat the process with the second set of servers. And you can break this down into as many groups as you like, but at least two. Now earlier, I talked about clearing the operations manager cache. There's a couple of different reasons why you would need to do this and a couple of different locations from which you would do this. There's different caches, basically. If you're at the console and you need to clear the cache, there's a command line option that you see right there on your screen. Now that's not the easiest thing in the world to remember, I will admit. But that's how you're going to clear the cache from the console. Next, let's go to management server. We'll go to agent last. When a management server is not functional and a restart has not fixed the problem and you've exhausted all of your other options, clear the cache. And I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. And an agent, this is also the final step when troubleshooting issues with an agent. The only step after this would be to remove and reinstall the agent on the monitor device in an attempt to correct the issue. Now, when you do a, cl a cache clear, this stops the system center management services, deletes the health service store files, resets the state of the agent, including all rules, monitors, outgoing data, and cache management packs, and then restarts the system center management service. When we get to the demo for this lesson, I'm going to show you where you go to clear the operations manager cache for the agent and the management server. The command line option you see here is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go over that in the demo. The other maintenance item that takes place in operations manager is grooming the database. Now, this is not what you do uh, to your dog, but it's kind of a similar process. When you go to get your dog groomed, you're getting rid of the old hair and stuff like that, and you're making your dog look nice again, right? But database grooming is a process of getting rid of that stale data from a database. And remember, we have two databases to worry about in Operations Manager. One is the operational database, and the second is the data warehouse. And they have very different grooming schedules, as you'll see on the graphic on your screen. The operational database, for the most part, Delete items that are older than seven days. And this is by design. The operational database is intended to be a nimble, fast-acting database. The more data that's in it, the slower it's going to be. And it's supposed to give you information in the here and now about what's going on in your environment. The data warehouse, on the other hand, is intended to have historical information. This is where items will go to die, eventually. And as you can see on your screen, some of the information is kept for as long as 400 days. This allows information to be kept for at least a year, 
but you can change this information if you like. In the operational database, grooming is performed from the operations manager console and you can modify the grooming schedule. From the data warehouse, however, you cannot modify those items from the operations manager console. You actually have to go to a SQL Server table and modify the values in the SQL Server table to change the number of days that items are kept in the data warehouse database. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to clear the cache for an agent and for the management server. Now, we're not going to actually clear the cache because that will mess up what I'm doing for the rest of the demo, but I will show you where to go to clear the cache. Second, review the database grooming schedules, and I'll show you both the operations manager database, the operations database, and the data warehouse database where you go to review the database grooming schedules. And then I'll show you how to enter maintenance mode. So without further ado, let's go and take care of this demonstration. And here we are back over in the operations manager console. As you can see, I've gone to monitoring and I've gone to operations manager. If I scroll up a little bit, you can see that's just one of the nodes here under monitoring. And I've expanded Operations Manager, Agent Details, and I've selected Agent Health State. Remember, I promised you that it was possible to reset the state of an agent from the Operations Manager console. To that end, you have an agent that we'd like to reset. Now, it's not one of the gray ones, though, although normally it would be. But for the purpose of demonstration, um, I want to make sure you know these ones are actually hard down right now. Um, they're doing other things in the lab. So I know that they're down, and why? This is the one I want to reset. Why? Because it's gray. Pretend it's gray. Um, and it's also the least critical of the server, so it's easy to test on. So you'll notice I've selected under agent state, file one. And then we've got this handy dandy health services task bar right over here on the right hand side of the screen. One of the items happens to be flush health service state and cache. So I'm going to click that. And it's going to ask me, well, which servers do you want to do this on? Well, file one, there's no parameters. And I'm going to use the predefined run as account. And you're going to see exactly what it does. It resets all states in the health service, everything. One of the things to understand is once you submit this task, you're never going to get a response. <laughs> and that's a little frustrating, but it makes sense because you're sending an order to the task to reset everything. Well, that includes orders you've sent it. So once that's underway, it's not going to know to send a response. So you can sit here and watch the response pane for, well, days upon end, and it's never going to come back and tell you what's going on. So bear that in mind. So then we submit the run button, and the task starts. And again, there will never be any task output. So we can safely click the close button and assume that the process went through. Now, we don't know that for a fact. We'd have to wait for this to, be, to come back to green. Um, and you have to give that a little bit of time. It can take some time for everything to come back to a normal state and for file one to come back into a real green state as opposed to a pretend gray state. Now, I also mentioned you can reset the state or the cache of your management server. Well, you'll notice that we go down a little further. We've got a management server option under operations manager in this node. So we'll select that, and we'll show the management server state. And once again, if you wanted to modify the state, that is, flush the cache, you'd simply click the flush health state, uh, flush health service state, and cache item over here in the tasks area. We're not going to do that again. We've got to see exactly what that does with uh, the agent. It does basically the same process, except it does it for the management server. Next, I promised that I would show you how to change the database grooming schedule or view the database grooming schedule, I should say, in administration. So we go to administration. At the very bottom of the page, we have a settings area. And you're going to see one of the items is database grooming. And you can see that we have a lot of different items we can groom, resolved alerts, event data, performance data, task history, monitoring jobs, state change event data, all kinds of stuff, and most of them are set to seven days with the exception of performance signatures, which are set to two, but everything else is set to seven days. 
Well, let's say we want to keep task history for nine days. So we click the edit button and we can change that to nine days. And you'll see then that operations manager will keep that information for nine days. That's pretty simple. There's really not much else to do here except make a few modifications to the number of days that items are kept in the operational database. Do bear in mind that the longer you keep items in the operational database, the worse the operational database will perform. And again, the whole point of Operations Manager is to have a quick and snappy operational database so that things are done in a timely manner in the environment. If you don't, you could end up having errors that take longer to be raised and things like that, um, and just not quite as an efficient uh, operational mechanism as you would otherwise have. I recommend you generally keep the defaults here. There's not generally much of a reason to change these, but if you want to, this is where you do it. Now modifying the operational database parameters is pretty easy. However, modifying the data warehouse parameters, the, the deletion and the retention parameters, is not quite so straightforward. You'll see we're on the SCOM SQL Server, and that's where we need to be in order to perform this operation. I'm going to go to Start, and I'm going to open up the SQL Server Management Studio. My administrator account has full rights to the database server, so I'm going to click Connect. If you have a different account that you need to use, use that account here. And I'm going to go to Databases, Operations Manager Data Warehouse, Tables. And I'm going to be going down to find one called dbo.dataset. And here it is. And you'll see that we've got quite a piece of, uh, quite a few pieces of information here. But I'm going to right click this table. And I'm going to choose Select Top 1000 Rows. You'll notice if I move over, we've got a data set default name. What we're looking for is the associated data set ID, which is over here. So let's suppose we want to change something around state data, okay? Well, we got to make note of this GUI ID. So I'm, I'm going to copy it. Now, this globally unique ID is exactly what it sounds like. It's an identifier that's commonly used in SQL Server in order to be a unique key to a, da to a data table. Um, and as you can see, there's a reason why it makes a pretty good unique key because it's such a long string of letters and numbers. I've worked a lot with GUI ID-based uh, tables and they can get pretty confusing at times because there's, they're so nonsensical. The database ID doesn't mean anything, so it makes it hard to really link things together. Just if you have trouble with this because it's confusing, it ain't you. It's really the way that this thing is set up. Now we're going to go to the table named dbo.standarddatabaseaggregation. So we're going to scroll down a bit. And we've got standard database aggregation. Once again, we're going to open the table. This time I'm going to choose edit the top 200 rows. And we're going to have another set of database set IDs here. Now I'm going to copy, I want to paste into Notepad our GUI ID just so we can see what we're looking for. We're looking for ones that end in AFC. And there they are. These are the items that we're interested in with regard to modifying database grooming information for our purposes here for Operations Manager. And as you can see, we have aggregation type ID. Now those numbers mean something, 0, 20, and 30. 0 means raw, non-aggregated data. 20 is hourly data, and 30 is daily data. So it's how often um, will we work with that particular kind of data. You can actually get that granular with how, how much of this information is kept. We have aggregation... Uh, start delay minutes. We have build uh, aggregation store procedure name. We're really looking for a column that's named max data age days. So this is going to tell you again how long information for these three variables is kept. 180 days for the raw data 
400 days for the hourly and the daily data. Now if I want to, I'll change the daily data to 600 days just so we have some additional information, some additional time to keep this information. So that will now have a 600 day interval after, before which items will be deleted uh, for the uh, daily data that has to do with um, whichever category we chose before. No, this is not nearly as simple as what you saw for the operational database data. The data warehouse data grooming schedule is much more complex and much more granular, frankly, um, than you'll see with the operational data. And last on our list is to learn how to enter maintenance mode. So do that, we're going to go over to the Operations Manager console. Entering maintenance mode is actually a pretty easy process. I'm going to go to Monitoring. I'm going to go all the way up. And we're going to take a look at Discovered Inventory. I can place any of these items that I want into maintenance mode at this point. So if I wanted to, because this is down, I'll right click it and choose maintenance mode and start maintenance mode. Now I can choose here basically selected objects or selected objects and all their contained objects as well. If you're gonna, if you have, for example, the Hyper-V management pack installed and you're putting a host into maintenance mode, you may want to put the virtual machines that are included in that host in maintenance mode as well. And as long as they're associated in the management pack, then Operations Manager will place the whole kit and caboodle into maintenance mode. Now we have both planned and unplanned maintenance. Now they're the same categories, but if you choose planned or unplanned, then you look better if you choose planned. So we'll say we're going to do um, operating system maintenance or reconfiguration, which is basically the same thing. So we could put um, comment testing. And how long are we going to keep staying in maintenance mode? We could have to stay for a minimum of five minutes. And then we can say we want to stay for 30 minutes or we want to exit maintenance mode on December 17th at 3.08. And you'll notice when we go into maintenance mode, we get a wrench. Now, once we're in maintenance mode, we can edit maintenance mode settings. So we don't have to be in maintenance mode for 1,468 minutes. Or we can stop maintenance mode to bring the system back into operation. And that's it. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.